Vince versus The Hobbit, an unexpected journey. Hey everybody, I am Vince of Geekvolution and welcome to Vince versus. Today on Vince versus, I go toe to toe with The Hobbit. That's right, The Hobbit, an unexpected journey, specifically the first of the group. So, let's talk about some of the things I like quite a lot. Of course, the cinematography is beautiful. I almost feel like uh, our setting is beautiful. I almost feel like these movies are more of an exercise of showing off how pretty New Zealand is, more than uh, trying to adequately set the movie. But it's 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 still a very beautiful movie. And of course, the cast is superb. I mean, uh, Ian McKellen's back. Uh, Martin Freeman. Martin Freeman is quickly becoming one of my favorite actors. I mean, especially from uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and uh, his uh, role as Watson and Sherlock. I I enjoy this man's work quite a lot. And of course, we have a lot of people reprising old roles from uh, the Lord of the Rings. So now, speaking of Lord of the Rings, one of the things that pleases me about this movie is that that it's firmly being set up as a prequel to the other movies. So. There's no question as to why people are in this movie who are in Lord of the Rings. And uh, in doing so, it's sort of concise to, to put it this way. They have one major scene in the movie where they seriously tie everything in together, or at least uh, set a precedent for everything to be tied together. And the thing that's wonderful about that is that Gandalf is given a reason for being with these dwarves. He's not just a, a guy who, out of the kindness of his own heart, decided to help some dwarves and then decided that a hobbit would be useful for it. It's the fact that he has a reason to be there. He has a reason to have the common enemy of the dwarves, uh, meaning with the dwarves. This, this uh, dragon that they establish at the beginning of the movie. One of the things that, uh, and uh, keep in mind that I've not read the books, but according to a literature professor that I had at one point, <laughs> the uh, Tolkien style is very just dripping with history. So that becomes more important than most anything else in his book. This was the cup of blah blah that I got from Hoo Ha that gave me this thing, and then we went on this adventure, and man, that doesn't even pertain to the story. Why are we taking the detour? But. Uh, this movie stays fairly well on point, uh, but it does manage to give us quite a bit of history of the dwarves so that we understand why they are on this quest that they are on, and why they are enlisting the help of Gandalf and, of course, Bilbo Baggins, the Hobbit. Uh, Bilbo Baggins, played by Martin Freeman, so hooray. And, uh, so the history is very interesting. I, I like the, the fall of the dwarven, uh, the fall of the dwarven, oh, Kingdom, I guess we'll call it. I don't know. It's right there in the first ten minutes of the movie. And that's what really sets up this whole journey. Uh, the reason that it's an unexpected journey for Bilbo, anyway. And uh, the characterization of the dwarves... Now, here's, here's some of the issues that I have with the movie. Uh, the characterization of the dwarves are, are a little lacking. Uh, pretty much, they're just a bunch of archetypes. And uh, they're, they're largely unlikable. But, uh, well, yeah. They're rude... They're, they only really care about themselves, which is uh, unfortunate considering that they are enlisting the help of a wizard and a hobbit. Now granted, they're reluctantly accepting the help of a hobbit, but they are accepting, 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 they are accepting the help of a wizard. So I don't quite understand why they have to have all of this pride. It's like they... It's like they're trying to establish a dwarven character more than they're trying to establish a character who is a dwarf. Now, during the movie, we do get a couple moments. Well, we get one moment toward the end that's the climax of a character arc where a dwarf is able to break out of his typical dwarven, uh, well, attitude. And we have one moment where it's nice that we don't have to... We just start to see a dwarf as being somebody who is, uh, uh, m m if not likable, at least uh, sympathetic. Because they're not just a stereotype. It's hard to f have emotions for someone who is strictly an archetype. Uh, granted, I understand that they, at the beginning of the movie, they go through quite a tribulation, and it's hard for them to deal with, and of course that affects their attitude throughout the rest of the film. But the dwarves are just relentlessly rude to Bilbo, and they make fun of him, they say mean things to him, they give him no reason to uh, want to help them, and uh, Bilbo has to find that's largely what his character arc is about in the movie, is finding a reason to actually want to help these guys. Now, 
his reason for going on the journey to begin with was a little in question, and I don't necessarily think it was inadequate, but I feel like it was inadequately shot. I feel like there's a lot of time in this movie spent watching people walk around or spent watching the dwarves be dwarves. Uh, so you, you don't really get a sense of their characters beyond their archetypes. Like, uh, for example, they have uh, like the young and irresponsible dwarves. They have the old and wise dwarf. They have the prideful leader dwarf. They have the overweight comic relief dwarf. Uh, they they have the dim-witted dwarf. It's it's unfortunate that these dwarves are characterized by archetype, despite the fact that we have quite a long time with everybody in this movie. It's it's really like uh, they're trying to racially. It's like they're trying to racially profile dwarves within this movie, and I find it. I don't know. I, it's not necessarily something that's. Uh, unprogressive. It's just unsympathetic. Uh, I watch what happens at the beginning to the Dwarven Kingdom and you feel for that. But then immediately afterwards you're like, oh well, these aren't even really people. They're just archetypes. Why should I care about them? They're they're the same thing that you've seen in every other fantasy movie. Now granted, let's let's be realistic that the uh, that Tolkien was one of the front runners for uh, most modern fantasy and of course, uh, you know, Things like D&D spawn from it. Uh, people love that type of mythos, so therefore they create things like that type of mythos. But uh, this movie doesn't delve into any characters, and if and if there is an issue with the original book, that's fine. I, I suppose I can't judge the movie for having that issue, but on the flip side, it's a different medium. You can do different things with it, and of course they're going to do different things with it anyway, just to make it more uh, concise for film's sake, or or maybe even more expansive for film's sake, considering they're they're turning this into a series of movies rather than just a movie that's based on a book. So I, I will say that I find it weird that we have a movie devoted to each book of the Lord of the Rings, and then we have multiple movies devoted to The Hobbit, which was a single book. That's weird. I don't know that I like it. Now I will say that maybe the the coming movie or movies will be. Uh, Maybe, maybe, maybe things will tie together. Maybe I won't be so frustrated with the sequels. But this movie, there was so little happening during the beginning of the movie. And we saw so little other than just dwarves being dwarves. And a hobbit being reluctant. And the only person who really made me want to be on their side was, of course, Gandalf. And uh, Bilbo, I felt sorry for. Gandalf was an interesting guy. Uh, we don't get enough about the dwarves' noble qualities. They can be rude. I don't mind if the dwarves are going to be rude. If they're going to, if they're going to be the quintessential dwarf that uh, Tolkien has established, fine. I'm okay with that. But what we need is more opportunities for the dwarves to prove themselves. Now, now, uh, because it's not just about uh, what the movie becomes largely about is Bilbo trying to prove himself in the eyes of these hobbits, but he only gets a couple opportunities. And uh, the first opportunity that he gets, he of course, he, he takes reluctantly, and is then disappointed to see that they're judging him for even having taken it at all. And he becomes extremely, uh, well, disheartened by that, and who wouldn't? He, he did his best. And uh, they, don't, they choose not to recognize it. Now, they can keep their opinion of him largely, if they want to do this would be a good opportunity to see the nobility of the dwarves to see them break outside of their normal uh, mindset and say well done hobbit good job maybe you are a thief and then that would put Bilbo on the road to having these ideas that maybe uh, he is a good thief or that maybe being a thief is something that he could be that he could be good at by the end of the movie they're all all of the dwarves are still archetypes they're uh, one has a character arc, but he's still an archetype. He's just not quite as big of a jerk. <laughs> uh, one of the things that... Uh, here's another thing. Bilbo, his characterization is a little convenient. I feel like we get enough about Bilbo to lead us to where he is at the end of this film. Fair enough. I, I did appreciate his character arc, and I feel like it was, it was a, something that was worthwhile doing. In fact, it was even just a tad touching. But uh, I don't feel like we get enough big moments for him. I feel like we spend way too much time, way too much time, 
uh, and I said this before, experiencing the bizarre, prideful, stubborn nature of dwarves, and uh, we get a lot of, and, and experiencing the history of the dwarves, which of course is uh, fair enough, and of the history of the dwarves, what that serves to do, giving, all, giving us all that history, and uh, giving us the history that involves the dragon. What it does is it serves to expand the movie to uh, greater heights of epic nature. It's, it's trying to make the movie feel like, like an epic movie and not just a, an unexpected journey. Because if you take the history out, what the movie largely is is Bilbo deciding to go with these dwarves because uh, Gandalf said something to him that sort of made him feel like he'd be missing out. So Bilbo follows the dwarves, goes on this journey, and then by the end of it, they're part way there. That's that's really what it is. It's a bunch of people walking to a destination. And uh, <laughs> I feel weird because I feel like the same could be said about Lord of the Rings. I just feel like the Lord of the Rings movies are superior creatures to this one. We spend too much time on that other stuff and uh, don't really spend time on the character. It's okay that they're just walking somewhere, but we need character moments along the way in order for walking to that destination to be worthwhile. It can't just be a physical journey, it has to be an emotional journey. And uh, now we do get a couple of moments, and I did say that Bilbo has a character arc, uh, and, one, and the leader of the dwarves has a little bit of a character arc, but uh, his was extremely conveniently popped up, and uh, he needs moments to give Bilbo the benefit of the doubt. And, uh, yeah, so his kind of pops up. Granted, fair enough, I just feel like it was, it's something that might not carry over into the second movie. So Bilbo gets some convenient character moments. And, uh, it's, it's kind of shoved in there at the end. It's, it's as if somebody were to give Bilbo something to think about during the climax of the movie, and then by the climax of the movie, he's decided that uh, what he's going to do. So it's something that's literally established right before the climax of this film, and then he decides what he's going to do. And that's, that's what's really bothersome to me about it, is that uh, his character, or the, the thing that really defines his character arc, is established in the last part of the film. And uh, the thing, and also the thing that even decides that he's going to go on this journey, uh, uh, it's, it's ruining the status quo, breaking away from the status quo, that's what I meant to say, is uh, just given to him by Gandalf, says, I'm telling you this now. Well, why didn't you show us that? Why didn't you go back into his history? Why didn't you go back into his past? Why do we have to spend all this time watching dwarves be very dwarf-like? Why can't we see uh, dwarves being very individual-like? <laughs> I don't think that's a word that I could use. But uh, And instead of watching Bilbo be very hobbit-like, why don't we see Bilbo being the guy that Gandalf knows that he is? Because it just kind of comes out of nowhere. And, uh, of course, I feel like what they're trying to do is establish that Bilbo, or they're trying to use character... Or, Bilbo's characterization from Lord of the Rings uh, to make us understand what's going on currently. But that doesn't work because the character of Bilbo in those movies are the, is the character after Martin Freeman's character. Why? Because he progresses into that person. Uh, we don't necessarily know what he's like as a kid. Uh, I would venture to say that uh, what Gandalf says about Bilbo is uh, worth saying. Yeah, what Gandalf says about Bilbo is believable. I just feel like we need to say it. It's this this idea of showing versus telling. We get told a lot in this movie. There's something else that I think is hilarious. Now, the fight choreography in this movie is quite interesting. It's lots of fun. But I find myself wondering the feasibility. These guys get themselves into perilous situations that there is no way they would have survived. No way. And in fact, in the movie, they survive more by mir miracle or mir miraculous occurrence, more than their own uh, their own ability to survive. It's kind of like, wow, we lucked out. I'm glad nobody suffered any damage at all from that catastrophic event. <laughs> so it's it's amazing to me how much they survive in this movie, and it's also amazing to me how much stuff is just thrown in because they come a lot. Uh, it really feels like they're they're just on a road that's extremely perilous. There's 
There's no reason for them to be attacked by the things that they're attacked by. They just get attacked. And uh, it's, it's, like, it's like you're walking through the most dangerous part of the universe and bad things are happening to you. Despite the fact that you do have something that you're working towards, uh, you do have a person that you're trying to, or a person, you do have an enemy that you're trying to defeat, but uh, the obstacles that you're running into currently are not things that are directly connected to that obstacle. So that's really bizarre to me. Now, they do have a little bit of history intruding upon the, uh, the dwarves' current life, and that's, that's good, that's necessary. Uh, if you're going to spend time on history, you have to tie it in. And I don't know if that was in the book, I'm assuming it was, but it was much appreciated. An old foe re rears his head, and the dwarves have to deal with it. Now, the, the fight choreography in the Goblin Den is hilarious. Uh, it's, it's exciting, it's lots of fun, but there are things that happen that could not feasibly be done. And now, one of the things that bothers me, the reason why the fight choreography being so amazing, the reason it bothers me is that at the beginning of the movie, or at least during the first act, they straight out say that the dwarves only have a couple fighters among them, and those fighters are old fighters. So, what bothers me about that is why is or why are all of these dwarves and Bilbo and Gandalf, Gandalf I kind of expected, the, some of the dwarves I kind of expect, but they're all extremely capable and trained fighters. And Bilbo even uh, manages to deflect some attacks using his own blade. It's really bizarre to me how 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 good of a swordsman Bilbo is, despite the fact that he not only has never been trained, but has really never ventured outside of the Shire. So, why is he such a good sword fighter? That makes no sense. Now, granted, they, they make his uh, sword play a little uncoordinated to so make him seem untrained, but now maybe there is some th or something to say for uh, instinct. You can see where their blade is going, so you place yours in the way. But uh, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. I, I would believe that somebody might be able to luckily deflect one or two blows, but not... So it makes no sense. You like my professional terminology? So, uh, that's just bizarre to me. How can Bilbo be capable of swordplay? And how can physics allow the stuff that they do to happen? That's just impossible. So, uh, that being said, it's a... Uh, the last half of the movie is extremely exciting. Uh, it's it's a lot of fun to watch the last half of the movie, and it's a lot of fun to watch the beginning 15 minutes of the movie. But uh, in between there, it's extremely dull, and throughout all of it, the characters, the characterization is this uh, archetypal, unformed thing. It's unfortunate. And I do feel like we're going to get something a little bit better in the other movies, but I don't feel like this movie truly needed to exist in the length that it does. So... I think I can uh, sum it up by saying that the first half of the movie exists in history in place of characterization, and the last half of the movie exists in uh, fight choreography and infeasibility. So, uh, I, I enjoyed parts of the movie, specifically the Goblin Den, but uh, largely I did not enjoy this movie, so I can't recommend it. But it made a lot of money anyway, so who am I to judge? So, thanks for watching Vince Versus, and guys, we'll catch you next time.